Today on Jay Hunto's Garage, we're working on the steering wheel of the 97 Project Camaro. This looks like a job for... Look out! Changing out this cam harness for the turn signals. And another thing I'm going to fix is this. That is a loose tilt wheel issue that I'm gonna fix today. I know a lot of guys go ahead and work on the cars without uh, disconnecting the negatives, the terminal, the battery, and it usually turns out okay. Except for when you're dealing with airbags. You don't want one of those things going off in your face intermittently. It will ruin your day. So definitely disconnect that before you do it. On the 97 Camaro, in order to get the steering wheel off, you have to take the airbag off. Okay, I've taken this off, and it's basically four screws here in the back that, uh, the screws are here and they have retainers. So you get to them from behind the steering wheel. And they are, oh, what are they called? I can't remember what you call these these bits, but it's one of these star with a. They came out with these stupid things. Started putting a hole in the middle because the screw has a nub sticking up, which uh, makes it a pain in the butt if you have these but don't have this hole in the middle. So you got to buy more tools. That was a pain. Now. Here's your horn buttons. This is your airbag cable. You definitely want to just goes to this receptacle. You want to disconnect that just like the first thing you do when you pull this off. Just so you don't have any intermittent uh, airbag deployments. Now, these are where the horn contacts are. They fit in the airbag here on this side and on this side right here. Mine only has one. So it's uh, this is it and it just sits down in here like that and it contacts these springs here and uh, when you push it the horn blows and you only have to have one. I'm gonna take off this nut right here which is a 21 millimeter. 21 You'll need a steering wheel puller. You can also borrow these, rent them, whatever, from uh, your local auto parts store. Or buy one. They're pretty cheap. It's good to have one around if you do any kind of work on cars. It seems like it's one of those things that uh, when you need one, you need one. But you just don't need one all the time. Alright, the wheel's off. There it is. Next thing is a snap ring. It comes off real easy. Snap ring pliers. Okay, here's the fun part. This is a lock ring. And this, or lock plate, sorry. This is a lock plate tool I got from uh, AutoZone. You have to depress this to get to that ring right in there. So if you get this down, this comes out relatively easily because this is held in by tension. So once you get this off, then you can get to the uh, part we've got to change, which is this uh, canceling wire harness, turn signal harness. So I've got to uh, figure out what the heck's making it loose once uh, I get in there, the tilt wheel issue. This is the lock plate tool. It's going to thread onto this steering shaft. These two pieces will go up against the locking plate. And then you've got a uh, screwdriver handle basically to tighten that up, which I'm not going to try and do with one hand. You tighten that up and then you turn this nut, which will move this down and depress the locking plate, which will make some clearance for this ring so you can get the ring out and then this whole assembly will come out. Uh, I've got to disconnect the wiring harness down 
below so I'm gonna have to take off hush panels and whatnot down here in order to get to it not bad you can do it okay the tool is assembled there that's all it took just a few turns and this is now ready to be <laughs> monkeyed with to get it removed so once I get done monkeying around with that I'll uh, be able to take this out and be able to see what's going on okay the ring is off here it is there's a a groove way down in there that this thing sits in and then there is a second groove that while you're getting this out it goes from one groove to the next so you've really got to remove it twice <laughs> okay okay the locking plate's been removed right now this is in the 10 o'clock position I'm gonna try and put it back in the same way because this has a notice on it. Improper alignment of coil ASM may damage unit causing inflatable restraint system malfunction. CGM service renewal, blah 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 before removal. So I want to put it back in the same way it came out. Now here's our canceler. There's three screws right here. They look like these are Phillips, <laughs> of course. This one up here is a Torx head. And I'm gonna take I'm gonna take these out then I'm gonna go below and disconnect the harness okay the hush panel is off and it's this uh, harness right here you've got to get to and snake up through there that's gonna be interesting I won't put you through it but I'll give it a shot let you know how much of a pain it is just FYI this is my uh, turn signal flasher. Well, one day my flasher stopped working and this thing was the cause. I just moved it around a little bit and it started working so I tightened up the connections inside, took care of it, hadn't had an issue with it since. Just as a side note. Okay, this is a harness. This is kind of a pain because it comes through here that's why this thing is so flat. It's got to fit through this to get to the other side. What a pain. Not even sure why all this part of this bracket is even here. If it were open, the cables would just be under here and you put a couple zip ties on it. That'd sure be better because it's attached to the column here. Weird. Before this will come out, got to take a Phillips Phillips screw out of the hazard switch then that will come out okay this <laughs> this harness comes out through this opening in here and that's how the new one has to go in right through there comes out here and then into there couldn't be any more of a pain jeez on a side note I'm not doing it very well, but keep track of your screws, where they go, and your parts. Kind of keep them in order. That will make reassembly a whole lot easier. Okay, to address the original problem, which was the uh, tilt wheel being uh, sloppy, that's these three screws right here. Supposedly there's another one somewhere, but I'm going to address these three because they are loose. I've already tried them, so I'm going to pull them out one by one. I'm going to put some Loctite on them and put them back in so this never happens again. This is just as I thought. These had no Loctite on them. I just put this little dab on there. That should do it. Now I'm going to do the rest. All right. This does not just go willingly into more door of the steering column. I put a, I got some speaker wire just because it was handy. I tied it around there 
and ran it through both places that this has got to go through. So it's not only going to come out here, it's going to come through here and back out the other side where it ultimately has to be. So I'm going to give that a shot. That worked like a charm. It went straight through. Here's the end of it. Here's the speaker cable. It kind of it pulled itself off once it got down there, but uh, mission accomplished. Now I'll put the screws back in, starting with the uh, turn signal canceller. Just go in reverse order. Then these three screws here, and uh, put everything back. And hopefully the steering column issue will be taken care of. I'll let you know. Okay, I'm going to shoot some lithium grease in here mainly down here that is for the hazards it's, it's a little bit stiff and I'm gonna put some more up here for where the uh, this is what actually gets moved when you actuate the turn signal lever I personally like using white lithium grease because it stays where you put it and it stays there for a long time it's pretty tenacious and it's a good lubricant don't forget this bracket right here. It's kind of hard to see. But this bracket goes under this screw, sits in this slot here, and goes over to the handle. And it fits in a slot, and it's got a little round pivot point on it that uh, slides in a slot when you move the or actuate the turn signals. Feels good, actually. So this is where I lubricated here and down there for the uh, hazards, which hopefully I never have to need. But this is your main point here. Now, of course, everything goes back together in reverse order. Don't forget your spring, very important. You will not need the steering wheel puller when you put this back together. You just put the steering wheel back on, tighten it down according to your torque specifications. So, this goes, oh, I'm missing something. So this goes back in, and then the locking plate, locking plate goes in, like so. That's where it was. This will go over it. Then the steering wheel goes on. Uh, I've got to put the the locking plate tool back on to get this recessed enough to get the snap ring back in, which is here. And then I got that snap ring, and then the nut, which is uh, if you don't get it on right, you'll have a loose nut behind the wheel. Da dun da dun. <laughs> Note to self, before installing said locking tool, put this baby over here first, otherwise no worky. No special tools for installing this snap ring, FYI. Uh, I went ahead and got it past the uh, second detent and then put the tool back on and then recess the plate by screwing down this nut and then that just snaps right on the exact opposite of how you take it off because it's hard taking it off but it's easy going back on this comes off pretty easy too Okay, the next thing to go on is this, and this is going back in exactly the way it came out. Now this is a, uh, got a little bit of slack in it, so I have to pull it from under here, take it up, take up the slack, just back on the same way that it came off. Right. For 
some reason I'm thinking it's got to go in a little bit more. There we go. There, it's fully seated. Slack's taken up in the cable. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and connect everything underneath, put the hush panel back up, clean up a little bit, and then I'll put the wheel back on. And I uh, had to drop the column. They've got this uh, bracket here. This bracket here goes up. Its only purpose is to provide a mounting spot for a screw that goes right here. And that is just to hold the hush panel up. And then, uh, hush panel, hush puppy, whatever. And it hides all this. And then there's two more bolts up here that actually hold the column up. So I've taken those loose. I put one back in. I'll go ahead and put the other one back in, tighten them up. And then put this back up, put the panel back on, and we should be off and running. Then we'll see if it works. Okay, everything's connected underneath. I got the brackets installed, the columns up tight. Before I put the steering wheel on and put anything else back together, I'm going to see, I'm going to connect the battery, turn the key on and see if I got turn signals, because if not, <laughs> I have to go through all this again. Which I'd rather not do. Okay, I'm gonna try the hazards. Got hazards. Put the key in, dummy. It's a good sign. We got left, and we got right. That's good. All right, I'm gonna put it back together. Don't forget the snap ring. Note, when you're doing this, have your center ring, your steering wheel centered. There's a mark on your shaft here, and there's a mark on the actual wheel right above it. Make sure those are lined up. Otherwise, your wheel will be cattywampus while you're going down the road, and we don't want cattywampus wheels. Okay, I'm going to reinstall the nut so that there will only be one loose nut behind the wheel. I'm going to make this one tight, and then I'll plug in my airbag, make sure that my horn mechanism, which is here on the left, that... Uh, brass piece fits in there. I gotta make sure it fits. Just slide this in, tighten up the nuts on the back, and then I'm done. Uh, then I can put the panels on, back on underneath. Okay, back to the drawing board. This did not even address my loose tilt issue at all. Hasn't touched it. Hmm. I'll let you know what I find out. 